Our worst fear as humans is the fear of being rejected and criticized. We therefore avoid situations that subject ourselves to ridicule. But what if there was a better way of looking at this result? Ask yourself, how many new things would you try if you were no longer afraid of finishing last? I would like to share my story with you and the lessons we all can learn from a last place finisher. I would like to start by sharing my favorite picture from the 2018 Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, South Korea. This was the 15 kilometer cross country ski race. It might not look like it, but I finished the race in last place. The press called it the most dramatic last place finish of all time. <laughs> but in my heart, it was the happiest moment of my life. My dream was not to win gold, but to inspire and spark the imagination of millions that, like me, have fallen, failed, or finished last. I learned after finishing in last place that you can never fail if your dream is bigger than the outcome of the race. That you can turn any bad situation, even those that others consider failure, into a mind-blowing, awesome moment just by believing in yourself. That's why I decided to smile and take it all in as I crossed the finish line of my dream, not thinking what place I was in. Because for me, making it to the Olympic Games meant achieving my lifelong, promise, my lifelong dream and a promise I made when I was 14 years old. A promise I had made to my grandmother who would wake up early every Saturday morning to attend my swim meets. Today, 30 years later, I can still hear her voice telling me to always give my best, to never give up. Every Saturday after the swim meets, she would take me to breakfast and we would talk about the city we would visit when we made it to the Olympic Games. That didn't last long. One morning in January of 1989, I found myself next to her hospital bed, begging her not to give up, to fight for her life. That day, I held her hand and I made her a promise. I said, Agui, no te rindas. Echale todas las ganas. Fight for your life. And I promise if you make it, I will take you to the Olympic Games and I will make you an Olympic grandma. <laughs> that afternoon, I lost my best friend, my fighting partner. She didn't make it. But I held on to that promise I made to her to never give up on our dream. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, you can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. And 30 years after I made that promise, I received a text message from my best friend challenging me to try a new sport. A sport I had never heard of in my life. A sport that could help me fulfill my dream and my promise. But there was one thing keeping me from running out the door to chase after my childhood dream. She was my newborn daughter, and she was wrapped around my arms drinking a bottle of milk. Got to be honest, um, actually, there were two more reasons why I couldn't run out the door to chase after my childhood dream. You see, I believe you can turn any bad situation into an awesome moment. Only not when you're trying to tell your wife, who just gave birth to triplets, <laughs> that you're about to run out the door to chase after your childhood dream. And a promise you made to your grandmother 30 years ago. <laughs> Convincing my wife to support my crazy dream was not the only hurdle to overcome. There's also the fact that I'm from Mexico. A country with no winter sports. A country that had previously only participated in eight winter Olympic games. And that in the last three editions only had one athlete. Also the fact... That at 43 years of age, I would be 18 years older than the average Olympic athlete. And since Mexico did not have a ski federation at the time, it would also mean that I would have to do it all on my own, without any money, nor any sponsors. But perhaps the biggest hurdle to overcome was that I had never skied before in my life. <laughs> And that I needed to learn the sport of cross-country skiing. <laughs> and that I needed to learn the sport of cross-country skiing while living in one of the warmest places in North America. <laughs> and in less than 14 months, train, race, and qualify for the Winter Olympic Games. It sounds crazy, right? Yes. In my mind... The only question was, where do I begin? 
First time I heard about cross-country skiing through my friend's text message. I was working on a goal that had started 10 years before. On one of the scariest days of my life. When one morning, I had no strength to get out of bed. It turns out I was severely anemic and anorexic. My body was shutting down and I couldn't control it. I needed a plan to survive. And my brilliant plan to survive and defeat anorexia was to try to qualify for the hardest one-day endurance event in the world. <laughs> the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii. On a side note, I would like to tell you something. I did it. After 10 years of hard work and not giving up, on October 2017, I crossed triathlon's most famous finish line in Kona, Hawaii. <laughs> However, my dream race in Hawaii had not been what I expected. Ten months before the Ironman, I had to make one of the toughest decisions of my life and abruptly change direction to use all of the strength and all of the fitness that I had gained in over 10 years of training and competing in Ironman to chase after my biggest dream. Ten months before the Ironman, I sold the bicycle that I was going to use to race in Kona to pay for an airplane ticket to Traverse City, Michigan to meet my new coach and start my new cross-country skiing journey. The first time we spoke on the phone, my coach said, Herman, I'm terribly sorry, buddy. I don't have time to train a beginner. Thankfully, he called me back a few days later and said, look, man, I feel terrible for blowing you off like that. But listen, drive with me from Traverse City, Michigan to Salt Lake City, Utah, and on the road, I will teach you to ski. We hang up and it hit me. I would have to sell my triathlon bicycle that I was going to use in Kona to pay for a crazy trip across the United States from south to north, east to west, one end to another, just so I could learn to ski. A total of 6,400 miles. I continued traveling back and forth to train on the snow, using the money I got from selling my bicycle. But that eventually ran off. I had to start fundraising. It was really hard because there was so much I needed to learn and train. And yet, I had to call as many friends and family members as possible, asking them for money. My time was being spent selling my dream door to door instead of training. Thanks to the generosity, I was able to continue. And for 14 months, I traveled to over 14 countries in four different continents for over 40 races. A dream this big needed a team. It's impossible to do it on your own. And since Mexico did not have a national team that I could work with, I had to look outside. As I traveled the world, I started meeting athletes from different countries who also saw the need to work together. We represented different nations, but we shared one dream in common, to make it to the Olympic Games. I learned that sometimes to achieve our goals, it's more important to work together than to compete against each other. The athletes from Chile, Tonga, and Mexico joined forces. We spent months traveling, training, and racing together, sharing food, equipment, everything. Um, no, wait, almost everything. Y'all haven't met my friend Pita, and there's one thing that I want to tell you about him. If you ever want to keep your dreams alive, do not ever steal or borrow chocolate from a guy that looks like this. After two months of not giving up, the last week of the qualification period arrived. And with only two races left, it was all or nothing. We decided to race in Iceland. And Pita took an earlier flight out. He called me from the airport to ask me if I had bought my plane ticket. But I had no money left to buy it. Before leaving home, I promised my wife that I would not use any of the money that we needed to pay for our family's expenses. And without her knowing... I had already used all of the money available in a credit card. <laughs> I had no money left, and I had broken my promise. I landed in Munich only a few hours before the flight to Reykjavik was scheduled to depart. And that's when I saw the text message. My brother, have you checked the price of a one-way ticket? All I had was money for a one-way flight, 
And that is all I needed because I was determined to make it. And within a few minutes from departure, I held in my hand a one-way ticket to my last chance to make it to the Olympic Games. <laughs> the three of us landed in Reykjavik to the news that all roads leading to the race site were closed. We drove as far as we could and waited for two days for the storm to pass in a very small town. Training on a frozen running track. On the morning of the third day, we decided to go where we would miss our races. We took the risk. We drove for 10 hours through the storm, and we got there. But my back was in so much pain after the tense drive that I could hardly get out of the car. And yet, I had to wake up the next morning for our first race. Skiing in so much pain was almost impossible. And on the first lap, I fell and broke my pole strap. My brother from Chile caught up to me. He thought I was quitting, so he pushed me to get back in the race. As a result, I was disqualified. The rules were clear. No matter what the circumstances are, you should never push another competitor. The disqualification rule was fairly applied. I hit rock bottom. I was devastated, thinking how I would explain to my wife that I had failed. I woke up the next morning knowing I had nothing left to lose. Just making it this far was already the biggest fight of my life. I woke up and I raised my heart out. I gave everything I had. I fought till the last breath and I qualified. It was clear to me that we made it, not because we were the best, but because we were the ones willing to sacrifice everything to get there. And after 14 months of nonstop traveling, training, and racing, of being hungry, cold, without money, I was finally here in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, carrying my country's flag. No amount of words could express the level of happiness I was feeling. After 30 years of dreaming about this moment, and after all the hard work and dedication, I was marching in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. I guess somebody did notice how happy I was. <laughs> and she wrote an article about it. Three weeks after that dramatic qualifying race in Iceland, I was getting ready to compete in the Olympic Games and fulfill my dream. But my body started showing all the fatigue accumulated over the thousands of miles traveled. And on the morning of the race, I woke up with a terrible fever. As I prepared for the most important moment of my life, I started thinking on the people that had helped me get to this point. On all the sacrifices my family and I had to make. On all the struggles. On how my wife and I had kept each other strong. And how we had stayed together. And I thought, if the love of my family helped me get here, they will help me get through this tough race. I skied each one of the four laps with a secret companion. Each one of my kids had a lap. And on the last lap, guess who jumped in? My grandmother jumped in. I could hear her voice the whole way telling me to give my best, to never give up. Vamos, mijo, tú puedes. Vamos, vamos, vamos. As I approached the most important moment of my life, I started reflecting on the importance of my journey. I was not going to win a gold medal nor break a world record. But I would gain the right to look at my kids in the eye and ask them to never give up on their dreams. I would fulfill my promise and I'd be able to hug my parents and tell them that we did it. And certain that I was not alone, I approached the most important moment of my life, celebrating life. Celebrating never giving up. And that's when I saw my best friend waving the Mexican flag. I took it and I skied down the line. Enjoying every second, wishing it would never end. That's when I saw my brothers, a team of five nations united by one dream and one mantra. We never give up. First thing I did after crossing the finish line was hug my brother Pita. And I told him, my brother, we did it. We fought another day. He looked at me and said, no, my brother, we fought until the end. The most important lesson I learned after finishing in last place 
is that I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't finished last. If I had accepted society's common conception of what it means to finish in last place, feeling sad and defeated, this moment would have never existed. A moment that belongs to all of us that have ever dreamed of achieving something impossible. A moment that belongs to all of us that have ever dreamed of achieving something impossible. I know there's a better way of looking at this result. Because finishing in last place gave me the voice I needed to inspire others to fight for their dreams. And to tell them to not listen to what others say. Because the people that criticize are not the ones that finish in front, but the ones that never started. Don't be afraid to dream. Don't be afraid to go after your dreams. Give your best effort every day. Be patient. And above all, always remember to smile. Because a smile can change the way we perceive any outcome. And now, let me ask you something. If you are no longer afraid of finishing last, tell me. What crazy dream are you going to start chasing now? Thank you. Thank you.